Can you imagine being locked up in an abandoned tower? You're in the middle of nowhere, waiting for your better half to rescue you so you can form a beautiful family. But it might take several years or even decades. Where are you going to get your protein? You can find something to entertain yourself, but food is absolutely essential to survive. In this video, we are going to use the clues the movie gives us to discover how did Fiona survive in the tallest tower. You rescued me! You're wonderful! You're... There is some likelihood her parents somehow send her food and drinks. Bye. Locking away your daughter to live in complete isolation is not the best example of affection Like when my parents didn't buy me an Expo 360 Because otherwise we wouldn't eat Not quite the same story, but still, same energy Anyway, how does someone get in without being reduced to bones? Maybe they had some sort of carrier pigeon or a bigger bird So they fly up to Fiona's window and deliver her goods But being that far and obviously there's a limit on the amount of supply a bird can carry What's inside? You can't put in a box. As we saw, she quite enjoys the best and most exquisite Chinese cuisine. Rats. Yeah, let me get some of that meow. And some of that oh, oh. She devoured those fresh rotisserie teas with enjoyment. Oh, this is delicious. This tells us she wasn't picky at all. She can eat any crap that comes her way. But I need you to pay attention to these details. When Shrek is rescuing Fiona from the castle, a huge cookbook can be seen in the background. It's open on a page titled Nightly Treats. And it's standing beside a huge cauldron big enough for a human body. <laughs> I doubt the lot the dragon is the one cooking the knives and following a recipe. Yes, we have seen her reason, as well as eating people in one bite with no problem. We also see many meatless skeletons of the knights we try to rescue her. Or skeleton too. That's the meat of your local burger shop. She's eating their flesh to get by during her captivity. That way she can survive. <laughs> I'm sorry. Does that mean Fiona's a cat? Well, this is very plausible. It's not that she was the one who killed them. That probably was the dragon. Although Fiona has the skill to make a kid free. Knights or even thieves that try to steal the castle treasures. They find a big obstacle, so they fall in battle. Their bodies are there left to waste. You don't want that. Think about children in Africa. As we know, Princess Fiona has been cursed to become an ogre at night. So she just enjoys some steaks in his ogre form. Shrek himself makes it clear he eats people in the introduction of the first movie. He is describing his favorite parts of people to eat. Squeeze the jelly from your eyes! Actually, it's quite good on toast. Yes, you might think he's just saying that to scare them off of villagers, but in the scene he's having dinner alone. He's actually eating a knife. And we also see a jar full of this. Man's with good supplement. But if you want me to keep supplying these videos, hit the like button. There's actually a really dark detail in Shrek 2. Inside the castle of Fiona's parents, there's multiple portraits of a woman. She's red hair just like Fiona, unlike her parents. She could be their grandmother, great-grandmother, or even a more distant ancestor. But who's the woman in the painting? No other than Elizabeth Bathory, the Countess of Blood. She was a noble woman who killed over 600 girls. She was believed to be a real vampire, as she would bath in the blood of her victims to prolong her youth. What a scary rejuvenation ritual. Wasn't there any for the forehead? She got the Plants vs. Zombies map in her head. She's considered the woman with the highest KDA in history. But it's really morbid to know Fiona is somehow a descendant of the Countess of Blood. And it fits with this whole theory. See, ogres are shown to have different traits than humans. And even more than a princess. Things we do see in Fiona. <sighs> Damn, girl! When Fiona's talking with Donkey, she's referring to herself as ugly. It's possible that Fiona sees herself as ugly not as a result of her coarse ogre form, but rather because of the things she has done to ensure her survival. This adds layers to Fiona's character and to her ugly comment. Because I told Shrek those rats was a bad idea. You are what you eat, I said. One of the best aspects of Shrek's movies is the way they subvert the traditional beauty and the beast trope. Kissing her better half will restore her true form. However, within the context of the first movie, this revelation makes little sense. A Shrek 2 reveals that her parents are humans. Well, kinda. Her ogre side was mainly because of a curse and that her true self has been human. That before kissing Shrek. The vague implication is that this change is caused by the bear's love. But if she indeed rely on her ogre form to eat, you know what kind of flesh, and decades full of solitude, being with Shrek and the things she had to do to survive affected her own self-image and her way of seeing the world. She will consider herself more monster than human, learning to accept it more and more. I'm supposed to be beautiful. But you are beautiful. 
With all clues on the table, this gives us a clear view of the things Fiona had to do to survive two decades in the tallest tower, building that belongs to a hidden princess that's been present in the whole Shrek saga. To discover who is this hidden princess, click on this video right here. But before, don't forget to give this video a like and a sub. Thanks a lot and see you there.